Hi, my name's Andy. At the end of the previous video, I'd said that the tank circuit above uh, the uh, VHF RF amplifier valve could be resolved to two components, the uh, coil and the capacitor, L and C. In this video, I want to show how I think the designer came to the decision to uh, construct the circuit the way he did. In this image I've got rid of the screen grid and the suppressor grid and the rest of the circuit uh, that we don't need. As we can think in terms of this circuit as just working with a triode. The incoming signals are taken in on the uh, little coil there and uh, that will take all signals that the aerial receives but because of the tune tank circuit only the selected frequencies will be amplified and taken out of the top of the tank circuit so let's push that uh, circuit over to the left and we'll identify some of the components so the uh, coil we will call L1 uh, that uh, capacitor with the arrow on the tuning uh, uh, capacitor we'll call that C1 the one above it we'll call C2 and we'll call this one C3 as we're not interested in the capacitor above C1 at this stage we'll just dim it out a little bit in fact as we're not really interested in the other components at this stage we'll dim them out as well what we will do, we'll keep in mind that we've got the plus voltage at the top of the coil and we've got about half of the supply voltage at the bottom of the coil subject to what the valve is doing. OK, so the designer says, what, what do I want? I know I need a capacitor and uh, I know I need a coil. I can connect those two together and uh, have a tuned tank circuit. Uh, I can make the capacitor variable so as I can tune a range of frequencies. But I've got to connect that to uh, the anode of the valve and that's got half of the voltage on it. And unfortunately the capacitor that I've got, one side of it has to be grounded to the chassis. And you might say that's OK, I'll put a, a series capacitor uh, above C1 and um, let's call that C2. So RF can quite happily go around that circuit and uh, it doesn't matter that uh, it's grounded in the, uh, in the, between those two capacitors and uh, no DC voltage can go to ground. You might say, well, I can't actually get the capacitive value I want, so I'll, I'll add th uh, C3 in there, and it's a, a capacitor uh, in parallel with a capacitor, so again, that's no problem. It's The basic st circuit's still the same. And, yep, it's OK if we connect it to the positive rail. The uh, uh, DC can't go to ground, yet it can go down through the coil to the valve, and the whole thing is a tuned circuit and somebody might say well you could uh, make uh, L1 a, a bit bigger and uh, tap it in the center and now if you couple the uh, positive volts to the middle of the coil you'll actually generate more volts across the capacitors as now it'll work like a little auto transformer Finally, you might say, well, if I put a, an iron dust core down the middle of the coil, I'll be able to make that adjustable as well. Although there's quite a few stages in the thought process to design a little circuit like this, if you strip it back to basics uh, in order to help you understand exactly what's happening in that tank circuit, you can see that it can be resolved back to two components and it just makes it a little bit easier to understand. I hope you find that uh, helpful and interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.